America's cities are supposed to be beacons of opportunity. They promise a chance at a better life. But for millions, that promise is turning into a cruel joke. The culprit? The ever-worsening affordable housing crisis. It's a crisis that's squeezing the life out of our urban centers, leaving countless Americans struggling to keep a roof over their heads. We're talking about teachers, nurses, firefighters, the very people who make our cities function, getting priced out of the places they serve. This isn't just about numbers on a spreadsheet. It's about real lives being crushed under the weight of unaffordable housing. It's about families being forced to make impossible choices between paying rent and putting food on the table. It's about the erosion of the American dream, one eviction notice at a time. And let's be clear, this isn't a problem exclusive to one city or one region. It's a national crisis, and it's time we started treating it like one. This isn't just a housing crisis, it's a human crisis. It's a crisis that demands our attention, our outrage, and most importantly, our action. We can't afford to stand by while our cities crumble under the weight of this crisis. We need solutions and we need them now. Let's take New York City, a place synonymous with opportunity and ambition. It's a city that's supposed to reward hard work and hustle. But the reality is far more grim, especially when it comes to housing. For the average New Yorker, finding an affordable place to live feels like winning the lottery, except the odds are stacked heavily against them. The numbers paint a bleak picture. The average salary in New York City hovers just under $89,000. That might sound like a decent income, but hold on to your hats, folks. When you factor in the sky-high rents, that salary doesn't stretch very far. In fact, it barely covers the cost of a shoebox apartment in some neighborhoods. We're talking about less than 5% of available rental units being within reach for the average New Yorker. Imagine working your tail off in the city that never sleeps, only to come home to a cramped, overpriced apartment. Or worse, being forced to move further and further away from the city center, adding hours to your commute and stress to your already hectic life. This is the reality for millions of New Yorkers, and it's a reality that's pushing the American dream further out of reach. What's considered affordable anyway? You shouldn't be spending more than 30% of your income on housing. But in cities like New York, it's tough to balance. The average New Yorker can only afford about 4.4% of rentals, Less than 5% of rentals are within reach. It's like squeezing into jeans two sizes too small. This isn't just about a nice apartment. It's about financial security. Forget about saving, investing, or enjoying a night out. The 30% threshold has become a financial chokehold. The affordable housing crisis extends far beyond cramped apartments and monthly bills. It's a silent thief robbing individuals, families, and communities of opportunity, trapping people in a never-ending struggle, leaving little hope for a brighter future. Imagine being a young professional fresh out of college, eager to make your mark. You land a job in a bustling city but can barely afford a place to live, faced with a choice, give up dreams or take on crippling debt. This crisis affects all ages, backgrounds, and income levels. The impact of the housing crisis on family planning is another alarming consequence. In a city like New York, where space is already a luxury, the prospect of raising a family in a cramped, overpriced apartment is daunting, to say the least. Couples are delaying parenthood and some are even foregoing it altogether. The numbers don't lie. Birth rates are declining, and while there are certainly other factors at play, the lack of affordable housing is a major contributor. It's not just about having enough space for a crib. It's about the financial strain of raising a family in an environment where every square foot comes with a hefty price tag. The rising cost of housing is forcing families to make difficult choices, and often, having children is the first thing to go. This isn't just a personal decision. It's a societal issue with far-reaching consequences. A declining birth rate means fewer young people to support our aging population, a shrinking workforce, and a less vibrant dynamic society. Now let's address the elephant in the room, the one the politicians like to dance around, illegal immigration. Look, I'm all for compassion and providing a safe haven for those fleeing persecution. But let's not pretend that the influx of undocumented immigrants isn't putting a strain on our already overburdened cities, especially when it comes to housing. We've all seen the headlines, cities struggling to accommodate the influx of migrants, resorting to desperate measures like housing them in hotels, tents, even cruise ships, 
And while it's important to treat everyone with dignity and respect, we can't ignore the fact that this situation is exacerbating an already dire housing crisis. It's like trying to put out a fire by pouring gasoline on it. We need to have an honest conversation about the impact of illegal immigration on our cities without resorting to fear-mongering or dehumanizing language. It's a complex issue, but one thing's for sure, we can't keep kicking the can down the road and hoping for the best. Let's talk about those hotels for a minute, shall we? In a city where finding an affordable apartment feels like searching for a unicorn, we're putting up migrants in hotels, often at taxpayer expense. Now, I'm not saying we should leave people out on the streets, but let's be real. Is this really the best use of our resources, especially when we have countless citizens struggling to keep a roof over their heads? It's a classic case of misplaced priorities. We're prioritizing the needs of non-citizens over the needs of our own people, many of whom are struggling to stay afloat in the cities they call home. It's a slap in the face to hardworking Americans who are being priced out of their own neighborhoods, while newcomers are given preferential treatment. This isn't about being anti-immigrant. It's about being pro-American. It's about putting the needs of our citizens first. We need to find humane and sustainable solutions to the immigration crisis. But putting people up in hotels while our own citizens are struggling to afford rent is not the answer. The affordable housing crisis isn't just about economics, it's about equity. It's about who gets to live in our cities and who gets left behind. And increasingly, the answer is a tale of two cities, one for the haves and one for the have-nots. The gap between the rich and the poor is widening, and nowhere is this more evident than in our urban centers. On one hand, you have the wealthy elite living in luxury high-rises with their rooftop pools and private gyms, seemingly oblivious to the struggles of ordinary people. On the other hand, you have working-class families, essential workers, and seniors on fixed incomes, struggling to make ends meet, forced to choose between paying rent and putting food on the table. This growing divide is not only morally wrong, it's a recipe for social unrest. When people feel like the system is rigged against them, when they see their dreams slipping away while others prosper, it creates resentment, frustration, and anger. And let's not forget the racial disparities that permeate the housing crisis. Systemic racism has long played a role in shaping housing policies and practices in this country, and its legacy is still felt today. From redlining to discriminatory lending practices, communities of color have been disproportionately impacted by the lack of affordable housing. Black and Hispanic households are far more likely to be rent burdened, meaning they spend more than 30% of their income on housing than their white counterparts. They're also more likely to live in overcrowded or substandard housing, often in neighborhoods with fewer resources and opportunities. This isn't just a coincidence. It's the result of decades of discriminatory policies that have systematically disadvantaged communities of color. We can't talk about the affordable housing crisis without acknowledging the role of race and racism in perpetuating this injustice. The affordable housing crisis is a ticking time bomb and its consequences are far-reaching. It's eroding the fabric of our cities, fueling inequality and threatening the American dream for millions. We're seeing rising homelessness, increased poverty, and a growing sense of despair in many urban centers. This isn't just a problem for those directly affected. It's a problem for all of us. When people can't afford to live in our cities, it impacts everyone. Businesses struggle to find workers, schools face declining enrollment, and the overall quality of life suffers. We can't afford to ignore this crisis any longer. The consequences are too great, the human cost too high. We need to act now before it's too late. So, what can we do about it? The good news is that there are solutions, but they require bold action and a commitment to change. We need to increase the supply of affordable housing, strengthen tenant protections, and address the root causes of this crisis including poverty, inequality, and discrimination. We need to invest in public housing, provide more rental assistance, and offer tax incentives for developers who build affordable units. We need to crack down on predatory lending practices, fight for rent control measures, and ensure that everyone has access to safe, decent, and affordable housing. This is not just a government problem, it's a collective responsibility. We all have a role to play in demanding change, 
contact your elected officials, support organizations fighting for housing justice, and make your voice heard. The future of our cities depends on it. Let's reclaim our cities and ensure that everyone has a place to call home.